What's up, everybody? I'm the Zim. This is the Zim's Video Journal, episode 121. Thanks for joining. Got a lot to talk about. I wrote down a lot again. Let's look at that. That's a whole page of stuff. Let's see if I get to all of it. First of all, Jam of the Week. I'm playing it right now. It's um, Simeon Project. Simeon Project, but with Brianna Morales. And um, I don't remember the name of the song, so I'll put it in the notes the name of the song but it's off of the new album he's got out on Arcadia Arcadian album I like it a lot I like it that's my jam of the week but speaking of Simeon Project I have two two download cards for Simeon Project and a sticker two stickers so anybody here's the thing little game time little giveaway time if anybody wants download project of uh um, Simeon Project's new album. All you gotta do, share this video on social and tag either Simeon Project or The Zim or anything like that. Um, share it out. So do it if you want it. And then if I get more than two people that share it, then I'll just randomly select two of them. But if, uh, if I only get, I don't know. It's a, I'm gonna be honest, it doesn't really... Local music is really hard to um, inspire people to want to do stuff like this. But if you are friends with Kasson Crooker and Simeon Project and want to get down with his thing, then um, do it. Do it. Share this video and, and I'll send you, I'll get your address and I'll send you. Or actually, I mean, I can send you the actual thing, but on the back, I can just send you the access code too. That may be easier. But if you want the sticker, well, anyways, we'll work it out. But uh, let's get, let's do this, shall we? We're on the This is version 121. Like I said, everything that went down, musical and artistic journey. Got that. Facebook events I put. The first thing on my list was Facebook events. Um, I just don't get it. I'm going to tell you the truth. I I, I was going to get in rant mode. I mean, I don't think I'll get to everything I wanted to say because I wanted to rant on some stuff. Maybe I'll do a separate video about some rant stuff. But um, um, Facebook event page, I really don't understand why it's so hard to set up Facebook event pages so they actually work for you. I mean, so I hear so often people complain about they don't, not enough people come to shows and, you know, all this types of stuff. And there's simple, simple things that you can do to help yourself out. And it's one of those things is set up the event page so people can actually find out about what it is you're trying to celebrate, what the event is. And one of the easiest ways to do that in the, in the body of the event, in the subject or whatever it is the, the I can't remember the term but but um link up the music link up the bands link up the pages put some links in the body and so many times I go to event pages and there's no links to anything I'm like I do not want to have to type it out again if I'm on my phone especially trying to you know it's a pain in the ass to try to type um you know copy and paste or type in the search bar the thing so if it's just linked up just make it happen. Just make it happen. So it's my little rant for this day because it's just like leaving opportunity on the table. I mean, I've you've already heard me go off about how I don't think you're where you, as a as a whole of this artistic community is using Facebook event pages pro, like to their fullest. Um, we're not. We're, we kind of we have this assumption that they don't work, but they don't work because you're not using it right. So if you want more about that, I'm happy to go into it. Feel free to ask me. I know I feel like we're leaving opportunity on the table by not treating event pages the way they need to be treated. So there's that. We're at the top, December 16th, I wanted to mention as well. Oh, let me jump back. Simeon Project, that whole thing. I wanted to also shout out, he's got a show, His C the release, the CD release for all this good stuff is um, September 15th at the High Dive. So get there. I won't be in town, so I won't be able to make it. But you should go for me. You need to go for me. You need to go for me. So anyways, and then... Just way down the line, way down, way down there, um, the Zim and A Rock, my band, right there, we're going to be playing December 16th, I believe that's a Friday, but it's a ways out, at the Skylark Cafe in West Seattle, we're gonna, it's gonna be kind of my, I'm calling it my life transition show, because as you know, I'm moving to San Diego in January, so this is gonna be kind of my life transition show, um, I'm not gonna be leaving Seattle, but keep that and something came up some idea came up um feelings around the move i'll put that down there so i'll get to that in a minute but so far if long as nothing channel i'm let the cat out of the bag a little bit i've invited a few bands 
to be a part of it, and one of them is confirmed, and that band has been Mountains and Tunnels, so hopefully that comes all the way through, But and then I'm still waiting back from the other bands, but, you know, we got a ways out there. So that's that. December 16th, put it on your calendar, save the date, do that thing. So right off the top, you know, feelings around moving to San Diego. One of the things um, that is really on the top of my mind these days is finding, looking for a place to live. So I'm going to reach out to you, the network that's watching this, um, as well as every other network that I'm, I've been reaching out to every single person I know in San Diego trying to find out opportunities. Just looking for opportunities is really what I'm just striving for and just going for and just trying to create opportunities by asking everybody I know that has any kind of connection to San Diego at all. And um, because it's like I find the who you know, like connections, the one to one, the relationships is way better than looking on Craigslist and that types of things for things. So if you can get in inside, so that's just what I'm doing. I mean, it's the same thing with, it's the same thing I've been talking about for years on these video journals. It's just like going to shows, networking, getting to know people will be better for your career as a whole than trying to do like Craigslist or anything like that. You need to be out there in the community. And so I'm trying to access my community as much as I can. And one of my biggest things is finding a place to live. I'm looking, you know, I don't want to say how much I want to spend because I don't want to, I just want to know if you have access to anybody in San Diego that has a place to live. Let a, let me know about it. A two, at least a two bedroom apartment or house, um, because I find sometimes the best deals are just through people you know. Because you don't even need to post them because that's why they're the best deals. <laughs> because they don't they're so good that they're just word of mouth and like oh I'm moving out of this house I know a person that will like it so. If you can help me network in that way, that'd be great. Also for a job, um, that one I'm not as worried about because I can do I can do anything, so I can just get a job part time. But if there's something cool like something music related, something photo related, something video related, something craft and art related, uh, let me know. Um, let's do this, you and me together. But um, I'll just say the, the what I brought the feelings around moving. One of the things I'm kind of I don't, anxious isn't the right word but thinking about a lot is when I'm talking about moving I don't I'm hoping that my goal is to stay connected to the Seattle music community I, my goal is to keep world on the street going I mentioned I talked about it last video journal I don't know what that's gonna look like I, I, my goal is to come back and play with a rock and be a part of just be a part of this community still like every so often come back and just and and um but I I, I wonder and I don't know I can't wear I can't put too much worry or time or invest energy into this thought but it's just this idea of like being written off because i'm not here as my i don't live here in the same way that i used to and so i just i'm it just concerns me that i'm kind of just getting written off or or you know what's the blown off you know just kind of like like I'm not take being gonna be taken seriously because I'm not here anymore. Where, but I'm I still want the world on the street, especially to be a Seattle focus. Like, this is I've been here. I'm 39 years old and I've been here since I was three years old. So 36 years I've lived in the Northwest in Seattle. This, for all intents and purposes, I mean this is an important place to me, and I really really like and and I'm thankful for all the connections and things that I've been involved with and who I've become because of being in this place and I don't I'm not willing I'm not ready at all to just let that go and I really like what's been happening with we're on the street and the growth of it so I don't know those are just some thoughts just to put it out there but so so now you know the struggle I wrote this down I can't remember the context but I'm just gonna say it because it's a good idea the struggle for external validation and support that's it's a it's a great concept to think about because as an artist it's something that we deal with it's like why do we do this and a lot of that is external validation and support speaking of i didn't get any new um reviews for the podcast this week i mean i got three last week so that was awesome but i really want that to keep that going so please go to wotspodcast.com find the links to the itunes page go to itunes post the rating and review on itunes let me do that i mean if that's the only place i look for them if people are posting rating or reviews on other podcast outlets let me know and i'll go find it because otherwise i won't be looking for it so let me know about it but itunes is the place that's i mean itunes is the big gun i've said it over and over 
iTunes is a big gun for podcasts, so if I can make a dent on iTunes, then that's better for me. If I can start getting a, a much more consistent um, cycle of reviews, that'd be great. Um, biggest fear. So yeah, looking for a place to live. That's, I kind of wrote these in a weird order, but um, biggest fear. So I recognizing so my biggest fear with this whole move is finding a place to live and how that's going to work out. I had a pretty a panicky moment this last week, but I figured out what I need to do to not be panicky about it. But I'm realizing this idea of fear and my anxiety, and I'm, I'm going to see if I can put this into words the way that um, I've been thinking about it, but I'm recognizing how f being afraid has been the, the root of a lot of my anxiety. And it's, I mean, that's what kind of anxiety is, is fear. But it's like, I'm, I've been trying to get in more touch with that idea and just essentially going, I don't have to be afraid, you know? And it's like, why am I so afraid? Just trying to get to the root of the fear. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know more about that as I discover in myself. An idea that came up two, a couple weeks ago. Remember, I went to the Art Walk um, and photoed Katie Kirkji's Art uh, Access Gallery audio visual thing well i went to that did that thing and then i also walked did the actual art walk went around and saw other art and it got me really thinking about who i am as a person in a lot of ways and i was recognizing like i have this this is a little little section about who of who i am and it's like there's this trifecta this triangle triangulation of who i am and on each point one point is the artist the visual artist my tunnel books and just just art things drawings everything like that my physical art that i do the other point is the music career i'm into and the other point is my athletic career or my athletic being of who i am and you know the the athletic like they all kind of they they all kind of awoke at the same time and this is what i know about those three things and it's interesting for me to think about my athletic career I'm a natural athlete. I'm just, I don't have any, there's no reason for me to be a good athlete because there was, I mean, I guess if you look back, my grandparents were dancers, things like that, but there isn't like an athletic thread through my family. There isn't like, like any college or professional athletes or anything like that in my family, but I just had a natural ability for athletics. However, I'm really small. I'm 5'8". I'm not that, I'm like 150 pounds. I'm not a big person. I mean, there are a lot of athletes. Um, athletics that you can do as a small person but you know a lot of professional athletes are really big people so and just what i was into is just the the common ones like basketball soccer um football baseball those are the kind of athletics i was into growing up and and just kind of got good i was like a star of the playground you know growing up it was very quickly when um i started learning how to play football and stuff i went from not knowing anything about football to first picked or forced captain like I had to be like I was always and any pretty much any sport any playground sport that I did in in middle school and whatnot it was just like I was recognized for my athletic prowess quickly you know I don't know if I have a regret in it but one thing I do think about a lot is I wish you know a lot of ways I did I stuck with football in high school I went out for football too early I went out before there were any other freshmen there um, and nobody told me anything like all I, I believe, I don't know, maybe I still would have ended up on the path I went up on, but I believe if one of the coaches or one of the players was, would have said, Hey dude, you're like the only freshman here. Um, well just hang in there. You'll get it. You'll catch up. And then eventually you'll be actually learning with the other freshmen and stuff. But I didn't know that. Cause like people were doing all this stuff. I had no idea what they were doing and they all knew how to do it. And I was just like, I kind of got intimidated cause I wasn't getting, I wasn't basically being coached enough. Um, and, but I didn't recognize in hindsight, I recognized I was just like there too early. So there was just that, that's just an idea. Just, I kind of wish, but I did run, I ran all through high school. I went to cross country and I did cross country and track and I did one year of baseball in freshman year of baseball. And then I did that the summer between freshman and sophomore year. I did like a select, almost a select league in my neighborhood for baseball. Um, but then I just stuck, but then music kind of started to take over. So there's the athletic thing. So I'll get to the, the art thing. There is a very clear path of artwork through my family. My father's an artist, like, um, you know, there's just art. Art is something that's it's obvious. It's like yes, I'm a good artist because I've 
it, I learned it. I saw it happen and I learned it. And I was quickly became like the one of the best artists in my class, grow, you know, all the way through middle school and all that stuff. I went in high school. I did all four years in art, AP art in high school. And I ended up getting my degree, college degree in art. And I was continually praised for my artistic ability through college. And art is the thing. Art is the easiest thing for me. Art is the thing I can do without thinking. I can just do art and almost take it for granted how easy it is for me. And I do take it for granted because I don't, I'm not, it doesn't fight, it doesn't, I don't have the passion. And so that's what Pat, speaking of passion, that's where my musical person is. That for whatever reason, the, the music bug bit me hard. And that's, it's like, maybe it's because I'm not as good. I'm not nearly as good as, at music as I am at art and even athletics. Music is the thing I struggle with the most. You know, it's like, it's almost crazy that I'm trying to do as much with music as I am because it is such a struggle for me. I don't have perfect pitch or anything like that. It's always hard for me, like, like chordal qualities, like, you know, I can tell them now really easily, but just like knowing what the quality of chords are when I was in the jazz world, like being able to hear the quality of the chord, meaning when I say quality of chord, meaning major, minor, you know, augmented, all that stuff, you major, minor are easier, but when it gets a little more trickier than that, it's like, I just have a, I just can't here i have no idea so it's like doing solos and stuff i'm like i don't know i'll just play the scale and hope it works you know just kind of be crazy um and just but 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 music became like this passion that i just love doing i love being on stage and performing and i love just the way music kind of gets me in my core when i hear it right or all over my body like different places in my body will react depending on what what i'm listening to and but I don't know. Those are the three things. And so it got me thinking because I was on the art walk and I went around and saw the art walk and I was like, you know, half the stuff that's on these walls that people are making, there are like multiple thousands of dollars they're charging for. And I'm like, I can do that. And so it got me thinking like, why am I not doing that? And so I'm going to look at creating more visual art that can be trying try to sell I mean I know it's just as hard as every other thing but the fact that I can do that stuff without even thinking about it and those people are charging thousands of dollars for it it's like um maybe I should spend some time on that kind of world and try to figure it out because if I can make physical art like that work for me that'd be rad um anyways that's that and then then it got me thinking about the dichotomy of the art world and just the fact that the C, you know the main art walk in seattle is down in pioneer square right and it's like most of the people i saw were um you know student looking type people mostly white type people um some asians um mostly non-athletic looking type of people which makes sense i mean they're artists um but there's like the the demographic of people and at the same time, but because of this, this kind of art world is in Pioneer Square, right? And it's like, uh, I just mentioned there's art on the, that are hanging on walls for thousands of dollars of price in a place. And people will go that have the kind of money that can actually buy that will go through this space of Seattle. And yet it's in a space of Seattle that also is historically one of the most downtrodden i don't know the right word to use like there's a big homeless population down there soup kitchens you know different you know you know homeless shelter type places in the same area in the dichotomy that just blow it kind of blows my mind to think about that relationship that the affluent that this the the spread of you know haves and have nots in this one area just got me really i'm sure i'm not the first person to recognize that but it is it's an interesting idea to think about so i posted a bunch of um oh well, i posted five it looks like videos from my phone this week went out and checked shows so whenever videos from my phone are easy to post the moment of you know i go to a show hold my phone in the air take a one song video post it i got i caught the banner days at the tractor courtney marie anders anders andrew oh man my chicken scratch courtney marie andrews Andrews. Um, amazing. I want to give a shout, a special shout out to her. I want to have her on the podcast. She, that, that was my highlight, musical highlight of the week, going to see Courtney Marie Andrews. Uh, amazing, amazing, amazing. I mean, has a Americana kind of sound, 
not, I mean, not necessarily overly original. I mean, it's a sound you've heard a lot of times before, but she has a unique voice. I mean, it just didn't, she has a great voice. She has a great, um, you know, guitar, um, uh, affluence or whatever like she knew how to play the guitar in a unique and fun way it wasn't just chords she could pick it do different things her band was excellent I mean it was just like it was it was inspiring like I was thinking of song lyrics as I was watching her it was like so good I highly recommend Courtney Marie Andrews go check it out she's amazing um, so do that also went to see the purrs and the spider ferns in Tokyo Idaho at, at uh, Barboza got videos from my phone or all of those check them out um, do that thing, spread the love, share them, do that. Be sure to, you know, always subscribe to this page on YouTube. And then I also managed to post some photo sets that I've been taking. So photo sets usually are from a couple weeks ago. It takes me longer to get to them. I posted photo sets with the new lens, which reminds me I learned a new term. So this here, this is a lens. This is my old lens that I don't use. So the new lens, uh, it's over there. Um, so I was showing it to somebody, or somebody saw, he asked me what I was shooting on, and he, and he said something along the lines of, that's a nice piece of glass. And I don't know, I didn't, I, it took me so long to figure out what he was referring to, what he was talking about. It's like a lens, you know, photo lingo, I'm learning this stuff. One, I guess one of the things that photographers call a lens is glass. So I learned something new. It's so like, hey, I can be all a cool photo guy now. So anyways, with my new glass. So I posted... Um, Two, three photo sets I took, um, one with the new lens, two, one with, or two with the new lens, one with the old lens, and um, the ones with the old lens, I, I posted the Among Authors Screens photo set from their Among Authors CD release show, or album download, or digital release show, check that out, it's on the WOTS um, Facebook page, Word on the Street, facebook.com slash Word on the Street podcast, of course I'll, I'll tell you about it down there, also posted the Heather Thomas and quiet photo set I took at the substation, and also ever so Android, um, the homosexual wild powers and sundries at Numos when I went to the ever so Android Cedar release show. Um, so check them out. Check out my photo sets. Let me know what you think. Um, give them likes. Share them around. Do that thing. And of course, and I, as a as a general rule, I'm gonna start putting this into my actual photo albums, but. Um, if you are in any of those bands and you want to use any of those photos for anything you want, go right ahead. Just please tag me. Tag me back. Use the, you know, at W-O-T-S dash Word on the Street link for Facebook. I'm on Instagram and Twitter. On Instagram, it's at underscore the Zim. And Twitter are both at underscore the Zim on Instagram and Twitter. So link up those, tag those, um, please. That'll be rad. Just tag back. You know, you can. I don't care if you use it, whatever. Just tag me somewhere in the comments, in the description, in on the picture itself, whatever. Just tag me back somewhere so that people know who took the pictures. That'd be great. Um, so, last couple things here behind the scenes. This week we had on Word on the Street. We had um, Locomotive, the the young band from Seattle. Really great having them. I don't really. Nothing specific about their podcast. It was just a good one. They they we dropped a ton of names um, that they're they're influenced by a whole bunch of Seattle musicians. So it was great just getting just a different perspective. That's what we're on the streets all about getting as many perspectives as I can on what it means to be involved in this local scene. That's why I do more than just musicians because it's like more than that. There's a lot of different ideas and people that see the scene and can talk about it. So. It's that the one behind the scenes with it, the only thing um, behind the scenes with it was I didn't actually listen back to the whole podcast. I um, It's the first one I haven't listened back to. And just because I'm kind of, I mean, I'm, that was 97, right? And I don't know. I'm feeling more and more confident. I mean, I listened back to a bunch of it while I was editing it together. But I didn't. Normally, I will put it on my iTunes the next day or whatever and just listen to it myself. But I was... I don't know, I guess I was just more into listening to music these days right now. So, I guess that's it. I finished it. So, please subscribe to this channel and, um, you know, do that thing. That's awesome. Check out the podcast. Give us a review on iTunes. Um, yeah, WOTSpodcast.com. All the links to everything. Or not links so much, but I don't know. Whatever. I'll try to link up stuff down there. I link it up on, on uh, Facebook a lot. One last thing I'll mention, just to wrap this up too, is... I've been do, using Facebook a lot more and a lot differently. 
my word on the street page. I came across this idea through Gary Vaynerchuk, who I've told you about before. He's a marketing guy, awesome, gives out tons and tons of free content on what you need to do to become a, a better, mar a, just kind of get your thing that you're creating out more, be it your band, your art, your videos, whatever it is, how to do that in this current world. One of the ideas he brought up was creating whatever it is you're making, also make that a media outlet. And we're on the street is essentially already a media outlet. I might get cut off, so if I do, I'm just gonna leave it. But we're on the street is almost, but so I've been using the Facebook page as more of a media outlet. I'm posting recommended shows. Obviously I'm doing the videos for my phone and I'm doing um, my photo sets. You know, those are all connected to the world on the street. Um, and so I just upping this, this, this outlet, this idea of being a media outlet a lot more with um, word on the street. Um, so there's that. So anyways, thanks for watching. This is Zan Zin Video Journal, episode 121. And ch check you next week. And tomorrow's the Seahawks game. Go Hawks. Let's do this.